Michael. All right, here we are, Ceramis, Semi-Hydro, seasonal conditions, things to look out for. And I'm going to explain the best I can how to adapt it to your climate, assuming that you are growing mainly indoors in the winter, as opposed to, let's say, me growing outdoors in the winter during the day, but 5 p.m., all my orchids come back inside that cannot tolerate low temperatures. And I'm talking 15 degrees Celsius. That is my minimum that I go with, even though it says in any kind of care guides that I could get away with 12 degrees Celsius for the orchid. But growing in this method, inorganic, semi-hydro, permanently moist environment, there is an evaporative cooling effect. So I guesstimate, I've never put a thermometer down any of their throats, but I guesstimate my pots are gonna be inside cooler than the ambient air outside. So even if I have an orchid that can take 12 degrees Celsius and be fine or lower, I will bring that orchid inside for the night simply because I am kind of guessing that the pot is going to be much cooler than the ambient air. I take a three degree margin. So let's start with that. If you are, however, growing indoors most of the year, and let's say we'll go with winter, it doesn't matter with this grow method whether to transfer an orchid from organic media to inorganic media. That is not the point. That is not the advantage. Any transition from one media to another always is preferable to do so when there are signs of new roots. So this is a bit of a talky talky video, not, I'll get to the show and tell a little bit later. Your transition, regardless of your climate, is best to do when new roots grow. And again, no matter what media you want to transition your orchid into, the same goes if you maintain the orchid in the same kind of media that it came from but all you're doing is a refresh it's gonna have the same concept and possible fail if you do it without new roots to back you up so let's just say ceramis if you were to put it in your head that you are just going to repot an orchid into ceramis from organic media just think, what would you do if you were to repot your orchid from organic media into organic media? Take the ceramis out of the way, take the lecker out of the way. Don't think about those things. Just think, what would you do? First and foremost, before repotting, you would always wait for roots if you can. If it was an emergency, you would pot it probably into sphagnum moss to allow for more humidity in the root ball or the base where there are no roots, but you want to encourage root, you would keep it a little bit more protected uh, depending on the state of the orchid and not just blast it straight into its full light location in order to get it to grow. You would protect it a little bit until it gets established. And then you would also think, did, you know, can I keep it outside? Can I keep it inside? Are new, new growth growing? Yes, are the roots growing? Not yet, I'm waiting. All these factors and thought processes apply regardless of what media you're going to use. So I'm gonna just try to take the mystery out of the way with regards to semi-hydro being the devil, ceramis being awful. In organic growing method, you also have very, very different sizes of bark. You have moss, you can chop up the moss, you can keep the moss long stranded. You can use the moss only on the top and in the bottom, you've got bark, you've got perlite for aeration. Ceramis and also lecca, let me just put one little bead there, <laughs> are nothing else but a media to hold the orchid. If it can't grow in a tree, we grow them in pots. The media doesn't reflect whether the orchid is doing well or not. The media is not there to make everything magically appear and you walk away and you can grow orchids. The media is there to hold the orchid because we are growing epiphytes in pots. 
So why is there such a mystery in my head regarding Ceramis, Lecca, maybe even Lava Rock? But let's talk just the, the, the normal things here. And I, I strongly believe it's that people think that they are done because it's inorganic. And then they don't maintain, they don't follow up, they don't do the work. And when I say work, it is work to transition an orchid from organic into inorganic. Because what you're doing is you're making the orchid accustom itself to a different media, but you have to provide oxygen. It is moist. It can get stagnant in the reservoir. The reservoir, my goodness, if, you're, if you've got something like a Nelly Isla, for example, it will drink it empty probably faster than if you were growing in organic media. There is work involved. They need a lot of oxygen. In order to establish an orchid in Ceramis, in Lecca, there's a lot of oxygen required for the health of the root ball inside the pot. And how to go about getting that oxygen in is flushing. In the beginning, in order to establish an orchid in any kind of inorganic media, I will throw in lava rock as well. As you've seen maybe some videos, I've had lava rock and semi-hydro on everything was doing well. It's just the pot got too small and I can't carry that much weight. But it is oxygen and the only way to keep oxygen refreshed and circling around in the pot and not just relying on the exterior holes, if that is what you choose to do. You choose to do the classic semi-hydro method with the little drilled holes and the reservoir. You need to be pouring water through that pot. I would say as we're reaching winter every three days and just keep that oxygen going. Oh, it's too wet for the roots. Yeah, it's possible for the old roots. But again, if you're repotting at a time when new roots are growing, it is ideal for the new roots because the new roots want oxygen and it will draw them down into the ceramics as opposed to like creeping up and around and I don't know what. So first and foremost, oxygen supply is extremely important. And that is why there's always the flushing talk, the flushing talk. Well, when an orchid is established after a couple of years, the flushing becomes part of the, well, the routine of, oh, my reservoir is empty. I'm gonna flush before I fill it up. When an orchid is young, the flushing is paramount because of the O2. There's not much fertilizer going in here. There's possibly a lot of seaweed going in here. Every once in a while, I can chuck in some CalMag because I have some left over. But literally what I cannot stop doing is flushing the orchid and making sure that the oxygen and gravity pulls oxygen through the pot. Um, algae, ew, eek, yuck, yes, that's an aesthetic. I'm not bothered by it the orchid isn't bothered by it because I'm keeping the oxygen supply going. Will the media stay too wet? No, it doesn't. That is also something else that I also find because of how much air is in the pockets of this media, it doesn't actually stay too wet. On the contrary, it's now October, I have still been watering, flushing every three days. Yes, I live in Spain and this is gonna help me segue into your climate. If you're going to take a, let's say, a intermediate, but more on the cool side growing orchid, and you're going to transition that, then this is a great time of year because I am assuming, I don't own a Nelly Isla, for example, because I don't want the headache when the summer and the lack of humidity comes. But um, I'm assuming that a Nelly Isla is possibly starting new growth. And I would just watch to see what the base of the new growths do when new roots come. And I wouldn't mind if it was November, December, if I'm in your hemisphere doing you, to transition her at that point of time in the year instead of waiting. It is then up to the roots to get down into the media and up to you, the grower, to make sure that they don't dry off at the top. And that is another good thing about, let's say, your climate, I'm assuming that you would be indoors uh, during these months and you would be concerned about warmth. 
I spent a lot of electricity on heat mats. I don't do that anymore because some of my orchids failed anyway, so what's the point? But if you could find a bright location, not necessarily direct sun behind glass, but a bright location, the orchid needs to photosynthesize and she needs warmth at the base. So if you have a windowsill and underneath there's a radiator, I would put that orchid there to keep the pot nice and cozy and encourage the roots to grow down and avoid a little bit more of that evaporative cooling that I was speaking of before. So I hope that's kind of making sense. And again, think you've got ceramus or you've got leca. If you want, you've got lava rock. What would you do if you were going to do repot her into organic media? And instead of just doing what you do for organic media, you do it for ceramus. You do it for leca. But then you just keep flushing until you can see that your orchid is actually going to respond. So, yakety yak, let me just show you something. I'll get back to these guys, or maybe not. I don't know how far I have made the point or helped you out. Let me get you in a little bit and take these down before I make a massive mistake. It would just be awful. I mean, for seedlings, ceramus is just the bomb. All right, here's my wild cat. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the growing method of my wild cat. It was doing fabulously. The problem was me. In self-watering, can you believe it? I didn't even keep up with the reservoir to be full. I didn't. And I took a rescue plant. Sorry about the wind. I made it healthy. And then this summer I didn't keep up with its watering needs. And I put it back into almost rescue mode. Not quite, but almost. But you can see how wrinkled the pseudobulbs are since I did that video on the repot. Look at that. They've really desiccated. Let me make sure. They have really desiccated. Look at the one in the back. And I've lost four leaves so far about, you know, from the previous bulbs. But you can see that the ones, the new growths that were coming at the time, they are a little bit smaller, a little bit stunted, but they are now growing roots. There. I hope you can see that. Roots are coming and I am flushing every two to three days. And again, yes, I'm in Southern Spain, go flush away because of my climate. Let me just tuck them back up because they must not get dry. It's quite windy today. Yeah, I'm in Southern Spain. I can just flush away at heart's content. No, that's not the point. The point is not the climate. The point is what you're trying to achieve inside the pot. I flush every two days. This is a big orchid. I'm not going to make that mistake again. She needs a little bit more help than I was giving her. I just thought, well, self-watering, oncidium, rescue, doing fine. No problem. Walk away. Not good enough. You got to do the work. You got to do the work. So she's starting to get established again. And eventually, maybe next time we see her, these pseudobulbs will all have plumped up again. But for now, every two days I'm flushing. And I highly recommend that's one of the biggest, biggest factors I find for orchids that are just being transitioned into inorganic media, no matter what media it is. It's the flushing. It's the oxygen in the pot. Super, super important. In my opinion, one of the most important things before anything else in order to keep roots happy, encourage roots, and keep the oxygen flow going around there. Before fertilizer or anything, add seaweed and you're good to go. And again, your climate, when it comes to spring, summer, and you've got an established orchid and you can keep them outside, there's nothing wrong with hosing them down. Y'all are just as hot as we are down here in summer. So you can just go liberally. These are seedlings and I just spray them from the top in the summer. I have no care in the world and I do that two or three times a day because at the moment I have time. When it comes to next year, I might spray them down heavily in the morning once at lunch. That'll be it. But the flushing, I will never stop. Never. And I don't care that it's a seedling. I don't care that it's a big... Um, orchid. I do wonder if I've covered everything. Oh, 
Here, let me tell you. Ceramics, if you're gonna use it, any inorganic media, when you get that out of the bag, wash it. Wash it, wash it, wash it. You won't get all the powder off the first time, in Ceramis's case, not the second nor the third time, but wash it as best as you can. You don't want to suffocate roots by leaving powder inside a pot. That's just gonna accumulate in the reservoir. And every time you flush, some of it may go out of the holes, but some won't. And it'll just be a constant cycle and, and what's the point? And then when you repot, you'll see there's still some on the bottom despite the best effort of keeping it clean. But um, wash it out. I boil my inorganic media even just straight out of the bag. I wash it, I rinse it, and then I put it on the stove to boil it. I don't know how clean it is, how sterile it is, but it just gives me peace of mind. And really, it's, it's, it's a 10 minute rolling boil. What's the big deal, you know? So there's that. And when you think about seasons, I would say, don't worry about spring, summer. Your life is easy. When you think about fall and winter in your climate, don't worry about it. Your orchids are inside and they're at a comfy cozy. I don't know how warm you keep your house, 19, 20 degrees. Hey, what's not to like as an orchid? If it can be above a radiator by a, by a window, in this kind of a setup, it's rock and roll. All you need to do is go around with a jug of clean water every two or three days. Keep that root ball happy. Keep it saturated with oxygen and they'll love you for it. They'll love you for it, I promise. So I hope that some of this wasn't too much jibber jabber and me sounding like a salesperson. I wanted to answer your questions. I wanted to elaborate a little bit more about tendencies, possible tendencies that may arise. I don't know if I achieved that, but again, there's always the comment section below. And there you go. Any more questions that this might have triggered, then my goodness, please go ahead and ask away. I would really appreciate it. I have no problem clarifying or qualifying anything I have just mentioned here. And I hope to some degree this was useful and helpful. So thank you very much for your question. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you're gonna do something and then let me know how you get on. Take care, have a wonderful day. Bye.